Hello everybody. So I wanted to make a quick video today on real estate prices and where they're headed. And you may have seen the thumbnail and I wrote, wrote it as the coming massive rise in home prices. I almost added, you should be scared. Uh, and uh, I, I kind of borrowed the wording of fear-mongering YouTubers, but I replaced it with, with what I believe to be facts, fear my facts, but that's what I believe to be true, um, because actually it's, it's a massive rise that's going to happen. And I don't, I don't know, no investment advice, of course, but I don't know if it's going to be within a year or two years or three years, but there's going to be a massive rise. And that's because, as it's related to the name of my channel, Beat the Denominator, that is because buying housing, buying a house, is mostly a play on dollar devaluation. So I briefly wanted to cover this today in this video. If you've seen my channel since the beginning, you've probably heard this story before. But I wanted to walk you through the math and w explain why, in general, theoretically, single-family homes go up because of monetary inflation. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. There's other factors. But they're more idiosyncratic. The main factor is money printing. So let me get started. Over the long run, over the long term, real estate is going up. Over the long term, it's all it's it's almost always. I mean, it's, it is always like that over the long term. But it it's not because it's getting more, more valuable. In fact, if they printed homes as fast as the money supply, homes would be would be stable in price and they would actually even reduce in price as construction techniques improve, right? As efficiency of construction workers improves, uh, homes should get cheaper in price if they were growing as fast as the money supply or if we had a fixed money supply, but we don't. So homes are getting more valuable because the dollar is becoming less scarce and is being diluted, right? So although specific real estate can go up, monetary inflation adjusted um, because of things like cultural trend. You know, you find a fancy neighborhood or you find some, some demographic trends that show a growth in, in, uh, in, in the population in one area. Although these kind of idiosyncratic um, uh, factors here or employment or all of that stuff, um, what's, the, what's the bigger story over a longer period of time is that homes are very scarce and the dollar is becoming less scarce. And when you divide the number of homes out there by the number of dollars out there, if you print ever more dollars, your homes will go up in nominal terms. They will look like they've gone up tremendously in value. So what is the supply? Let's talk about, I'm going to go just for a little math of my thought here and what, I, what I'm thinking, how to um, show this, right? Although it's intuitive. But so what's the supply of single family homes? Well, the supply is very, very low because single family homes are a hard asset, literally. They can't be multiplied easily. You can't print them, right? You can't scale building family homes like software. You know, software scales rapidly, not building a home. Homes require land, material, labor, time. These are all very rare resources, one, one to the next. They're all very rare commodity type of resources. So how many single family homes is there in the US? Well, in early 2022, there was 8 point for 83 million, 83 million point four six homes in the U.S. And in early 2023, right, this January, there was 84.69 million. So we've only grown the money supply, the, the house supply, the supply of houses. We've only grown it by 0.441%. That's it. That's it. So, so, so the supply of homes... You know, as we get more efficient, as the economy gets better, we can only, I mean, it's essentially flat. I mean, it's going up just a tad, 0.5%, 0, 0 but no more. So when you own a home, you're not getting diluted, right? You, 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 your home as a share of total homes is not getting diluted year after year. And same over 30 years, there's very, very little dilution, right? But let's look at... The denominator now, the US dollar, that's the denominator. Homes are divided by US dollars. Everything is divided by US dollars. And that's so important to understand. So what's the supply of new dollars? Well, if you just use M2, which is what most YouTubers who talk about this stuff do, um, and if you're willing to forget about Euro dollars, and I have early videos in my channel that, that very few people have watched, and that's okay, where, where I talk about Euro dollars. So if you forget about Euro dollars, you could just use M2. But it's worse than just M2. I just want to say that. You know, I just want to put out the premise that 
M2 only matters is a false premise. It's a stretch because there is the euro dollar market, you know, and 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 money in the euro dollar euro dollar market flows back into the U.S. economy. Uh, so it's bigger than M2. M2 is just within the financial system. But that money flows back. That money that those U.S. dollars held abroad in offshore bank accounts flow back. But to make it easy, let's just use M2. And M2, you can see the growth in supply M2. This is the same, same time period, by the way. 2015 until 2022. 2015 until 2022. So while new single-family homes were essentially flat, you can see that the dollar is nothing but flat. The, dollar, the amount of dollars in circulation has increased by 70 to 80%. So let's do the math. Let's assume... Let's assume that there's a relatively stable share of homes available um, at any point in time for sale, right? And we don't know what that number is. I mean, you could look it up, but it, it, would, it wouldn't change much in the calculation. Let's just assume people sell homes in general at a natural rate. And then let's assume at a natural rate, a share of a money supply, relatively stable share of a money supply, is dedicated to housing. And let's assume these don't change much. So we have flat a new a flat new amount of homes and then we have a very very highly increasing denominator right and then you eliminate those two right because you're assuming they're both the same you're assuming they're both constant and the same so you make the calculation more simple by just dividing single family homes by money supply and i did a math for you here feel free to look at my calculation if you want to Relate that, relate to that, but it's only homes divided by the denominator. Homes divided by the size of the denominator. And this is the chart that I get for the increase in home prices. I've put it in base 100. So a home in 2015, right, if it was worth $100,000, today it'd be worth, you know, almost $180,000. And I'm guessing throughout the United States, it is just about right. But let's check. Let's check. Let's look at the curves. Let's look at the curves. So this is my chart. This is my very simple calculation. Stuff divided by money supply, i.e. single family homes, all of them divided by money supply in the United States, all of it. This is the curve you get. This is what I just showed you. This right here is M2, the money supply. It's only logical that it looks the same, right? It's only logical because key input into this calculation but look at this this is the actual data this is the actual case shiller index so the average of 20 major city cities and that's the actual data from 2015 also compared to 2022 so if you pause you know i invite you to pause and and, and look at both of these things it's 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 eerily similar the price of real of single family homes the most desirable asset when any family wants when that the average american wants a single family home that's the, the american dream the, the most desirable one very 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 closely follows the money supply it's a money supply story um it's always been one uh, owning real estate is first and foremost a dollar debasement story and why do I think there's going to be a massive rise in prices, right? Title of my video, massive rise. Why do I think there's going to be a massive rise? Maybe this year, maybe next year. Why? Well, because to me, in a month or two, we're going to have a Fed pivot. Um, but it could be six months. doesn't matter. We're going to have a Fed pivot because the government has racked up so much debt that they are not going to be able to afford the interest payments. And the whole idea is of, say, a, a platinum coin, coin print, minting a platinum platinum coin, or the whole idea that foreign buyers of debts are going to happen, that, that's not going to happen. It's going to be the Fed who's going to have to issue more base money to buy government debt, which means that monetary printing will resume. And I, I will make another full video about that, although if you've been following the channel for a while, you may know that I've done a, a lot of videos about this and my conviction on, on, on this and, and monetary printing being being the only way because of the debt and because of the unfunded entitlements that there are out there, like social security. So what's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen once the Fed starts printing again? Well, <laughs> this is my very, very simple drawing right here, but it's going to go back 
the way it's always been. And if you look at the data since 1965, we've just we've just grown, 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 grown the money supply. We've just grown the money supply ever since gold was exchanged for pieces of paper at banks, you know, at the end at the end of uh, the Gilded Age, right? Back in the 30s, ever since people gave their gold to banks and banks gave them notes instead of gold, they've been able to decouple the currency from the gold, right? Uh, Nixon was uh, the, the foreign gold that was inconvertible. Uh, American gold was before that, right? It was in the 30s, Roosevelt. Well, this is what we've had. And my guess is that money supply is going to grow at 15% going forward. And I've done I've done my whole calculation, and this is my thesis. Uh, I put that in another video in the channel. So let me conclude with this. It's a money supply story. Real estate is a money supply story. The more money supply grows, the more the cost of real estate is going to grow. Um, unless we have an amazing improvement in, for example, our ability to just have robots build homes, for example. That would be the only thing. That would be the only thing that could really disrupt it. But as long as building a building real estate is really, really tough and building single-family homes is really, really tough, I don't think this is going to be disrupted. This is not investment advice, of course. But let's look at... at, at I think this is my favorite example. I've used it many times in the channel. Is um, If you go back to the, to the, to the 1900, right, before 1910, um, medium-sized homes was 700, 725 bucks. Um, again, if you paid labor, 1100 $1, for a house like this. A house like this in, 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 in most big cities today would, would be 300000 300000 just about. Uh, and some people would argue it's better quality, this type of house. And, uh, and you know, you can go through Sears catalog of the 1900s and look at the homes and look at how they, they look. Some of the homes, even in the most expensive cities in the U.S., they have homes that look like that. It cost a fortune. And that's because of monetary inflation. And Charlie, as Charlie Munger says, almost any currency will be worthless within 100 years. Which means that they can't print your home away. Your, your home cannot be printed away. But your savings account can. So that's the whole story of real estate. So don't be fooled by short-term movement. All of these, all of these thumbnails, crash impending, sell now, this is scary, this is all this is all thumbnails. This is not based on on historical um, observation of what has happened and what has to happen. Uh, which is the increase, in money, the increase in money supply. The increase in money supply will happen. It has to happen. There's no way around it. There's no way around it because the government can't finance itself. Of course, this is just entertainment, not investment advice. I know I may have repeated a few things that I said in other videos, uh, but that's the nature of an educational channel, right? Is that you rep repetition is the nature of of, of, of um, edu ed education and educating. So, so repetition, repetition, I think, is is important here. I hope you liked the video. Thank you so much. If you can like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, and have a great day.